The seven star terror raid event for Incineroar is now live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, we're going to go through another consistent build that will allow you to take this down in game. Running from the 6th of September as of recording this video until the 8th, we're going to see the first time out for the seven star raid for Incineroar. You're going to be able to take this thing on and get it with the Mightiest Mark, which is going to be really a nice feature, especially if you're collecting all the Mightiest Mark Pokemon. We'll return for its second time out from the 13th until the 15th of September so you've got two opportunities to take this thing down in game but today we're going to feature another build that we've had that is going to be very consistent way of taking this down we'll jump over to that now and we'll get into all of the details the build that we're going to feature in today's video is going to be Don Dozo it is going to be level 100 we have hyper trained it so all those IVs are set to 31 it is going to have a fighting terror type and the held item of a shell bell the moveset is going to be Curse, Body Press and Body Slam. Just make sure that you do PP max your Body Press so you've got the maximum amount of those throughout the raid and you don't run out of them. The big important thing here is the ability which is unaware, which is going to ignore any of those bulk ups from the Incineroar throughout the raid. And the EV spread is going to be pretty straightforward as well with 252 EVs in HP and 252 EVs in defense with an impish nature. The remaining EVs can be put anywhere, not really going to play much of an effect in this raid. But the vitamin combination or the vitamin combination that you're going to need will be on the overlay now of the screen. So you can see what vitamins you need to get this exact EV spread for your Dondozo. But that is the build. As always, it will be down in the description below. We'll jump into the raid now and I'll show you how easy it can be to take on this seven star Incineroar. And when you first come into the raid against the Incineroar turn zero, it's going to drop that Intimidate onto our side of the field, reducing our attack by one stage. And then it'll follow that up with a Snarl, which will reduce our special attack. That's that's not going to play too much of a role in this raid. The big thing that we'd normally have to be watching out for is on 95% of the raid timer, Incineroar is going to fire off a taunt into any one of the four targets on our side of the field. Now, with other solo builds for the Incineroar, you have to be careful. You don't want the taunt coming off into your side of the field. But with the Dondozo, one of the beauties about this Pokemon, it doesn't matter if you've got Intimidate partnering Pokemon or if that taunt comes into you. The strategy is exactly the same every time you come into this raid. So what we're going to do on turn one is lock in with a body slam because we're pretty much just chasing our terrestrialization as quick as possible in this raid. Fortunately for us, the taunt doesn't get fired off into us. But like I say, it doesn't really matter because we're locking in with body slam turn one. And regardless of what the Incineroar does here, we are just going to be chasing our terrestrialization. So the sooner we can terrestrialize, the better in this raid because there are points later on in the raid or it does steal some of our Terra Orb charge. We want to terrestrialize as soon as possible. So even if you're taunted here, you're just locking in with the body slams, the abilities and stats being nullified on our side of the field doesn't make any difference either in this stage of the raid. The reason why we're going for body press is because it does have that paralysis chance. If you do paralyze the Incineroar, it is going to slow it down and you do have the chance for it not to move, which makes things a little bit easier for you, of course, as we get further into the raid. So just going to fire off that second body slam and this will be our third one before we can terrestrialize which is a really nice thing for us to do early on in this raid like i say it just chases the point where we are getting rid of those taunts if we are taunted and to the point where we can turn into a fighting type and get that additional boost onto our body press attacks so i'm going to see the incineral go for a bulk up kind of wasting its turns here with that unaware ability that we have on the dondozo and now we're going to be in that position on turn four to terrestrialize and we're going to immediately lock in with a curse and start getting these curses set up. So boosting our attack, our defense and dropping our speed by one stage every time we use it. And we do have that paralysis onto the Incineroar as well. So the RNG being a bit kinder to us. The one thing I would say about the Dondozo is, although you don't really care about what the Incineroar is doing, it is a much slower way to run through the raid. It is going to be a lot slower to beat it, but it is very consistent and you don't need to reset the raid or anything like that like you would with maybe some of the other builds that have been having success against the Incineroar this weekend. Dondos are a very good option and a very solid option available in the base games. Everyone has access to the Dondozo as well, which makes it a nice option for you to just go out catch in uh, Lake Acuity put together in game and then come and beat the Incineroar pretty easily and if you went and did the Dondozo seven star raid a few weeks ago as well you're going to have the mightiest mark Dondozo that you can even bring in to take on this raid and you can see the flare blitz is coming out uh, not really going to be doing very much at all to us because of these curse boosts that we've got under our belt of course we do ignore any bulk ups 
from the incinero side of the field with that unaware ability but the point of this is we're just chasing to the point where we're a plus six in attack plus six in defense with those curses and then we can start launching off those body presses you do get a bit lower on your hp stat at any point in the ridge just lock in with a body press to kind of recover some of that health that you have lost to put you in that bit of a better position but if you're like us here not really in danger of getting knocked out at all you can just continue going for those curses until you've got six of them under your belt and then from there on out it's going to be a case of just spamming body press until you've beaten the incineral so see the docus lariat coming out here it is going to ignore any of our boosts on our side of the field but again it's not really going to be doing too much damage to us so we don't really need to worry about that at all this is curse number five and we've got one more after this and then we're fully set up ready to start our onslaught onto this incineral and the shield hasn't even been set up yet which it will be soon so probably maybe this next turn it's worth probably just going for a body press to get some health back before that shield is set up because it does go up on about 60 percent of the rate timer but and out of time there we miss it so uh, we'll go for that final curse before we do get set up and we can just take a quick look we're nearly plus six in our defense stat which is great and the incineral is well being kept in check a little bit its defense is plus six but i mean we do ignore those boosts there's another darkest lariat come out the intimidator on our side of the field kind of skewing our plans here a little bit where we are going to see a critical hit fight off not the most ideal thing to have and if this does happen to you in the raid the amount of attacks that are coming out from the incineral it's inevitable that you probably will get a critical hit at some point but you will get hit with a flare blitz and get burnt then if this does happen just go for a heal cheer uh, it's it's very simple the one bad thing about the dondozo is it's very slow so it will be going second so you don't really want to risk it getting knocked out especially after you have put all that time into kind of this initial setup you can see the red timer is still a pretty healthy position here but don't take any chances after you've got this initial setup kind of complete where you can launch off those body presses so darkest lyric coming out again take that pretty comfortably and now we're going to be in that position where we are plus six in our defense and we'll be able to fire off these body presses and start recovering a little bit of that health another Docus Larry coming out but we take that pretty comfortably here and then the body press is going to be exactly what we need here just to get some of that health back and not doing a massive amount of damage but enough to put us in a more comfortable position hp wise where we're going to be able to take the attacks coming out from this incineral as we are now just going to just spam the body press from here on out and like i said it's not the fastest build to do the incineral but it's a pretty consistent one and one that i thought would be worth putting up on the channel just to kind of give you an example of an alternative to the malamar if you've tried that and you haven't had success with it because I think the one thing that you would say about this Incineral Raid is it's very volatile where depending on the partnering Pokemon that you've got coming into the raid, depending on where the taunt goes, there's a lot of variations that can happen, especially with the RNG when you add that on top, whereas the Dondoza feels like one of those Pokemon. It is slow, yes, but it is going to be capable of beating the Incineral pretty consistently every time you go into the raid and like i said it's not probably one that you want to use for farming herba mystica but i mean if you've got the patience then you are going to have an easy time doing that with the dondozer you're not going to get knocked out you're not going to have any issues throughout the raid over the weekend when it's running taking this thing down with dondozer but from here on out like i say we're just getting to the point where we can break the shield utilizing these body presses we're plus six in our defense so we're hitting for the maximum amount of damage and it is just a matter of time and we're slowly catching up with the raid timer as well with the incineral but if you've got your own builds that you've been trying this weekend drop them down in the description below help uh, other people that may be having a difficult time with the incineral i've tried a bunch of different builds against the incineral and nothing's really felt as good as the malamar which we obviously featured in our first video and then the Dondozo as well. I think everything else is so really volatile, like I've already mentioned, very dependent on raid partners, very dependent on where the taunt goes and just not very consistent options. Iron Hands can do it, of course. Uh, Glaring Zapdos is another option that I think could be uh, looked at, but they're not the most consistent options and not ones that I would really want to recommend to you guys here on the channel because I try and put out builds that are going to be consistent going to be reliable to use regardless of what happens in the raid and i feel like between the malamar and the dondozo these are two builds that you're going to have a lot of success with if you take them take the time to build them in game and take on this incinero so there's the shield broken 
Now our damage will be increased, of course. And you can see we're slowly topping our health back up and catching up with that raid timer, which we should be able to do now, which is the nice thing. So um, like I said, it's not the fastest at all. It is probably one of the slowest, but it is a very consistent way to take down this Incineroar, which is the, one of the main things, you know, you want to come into the raid and you don't really want to worry about what the variations are that the Incineroar does. You want to just have a straight game plan, which is exactly what you can do with the Dondozo. There's just a few things that you need to keep in mind, I guess, through the setup, making sure that your HP is in a healthy position, as well as just making sure that you're kind of choosing the right moves at the right time throughout the raid and uh, not taking any unnecessary risks where it could cost you kind of the raid because as you can see the raid timer it's such a low point we don't really have much room for uh, error throughout the raid and like i said at the start when we covered the build kind of want to pp max that body press but it doesn't matter so much because we've still got plenty of those left um and even if you haven't pp maxed them you probably just got enough to beat the raid eventually if everything goes all right as planned throughout here one more body press is going to be enough to take down this incinero i feel like with the time investment that we've put in with the dondozo we deserve at least two herbamistica drops so hopefully that's something that we see I haven't seen that message in a while but you are probably going to see that quite frequently if you use the dondozo against the incinero where our timer is getting very low as it fires off one final Docus Lariat to try and take us down, but not going to be mighty enough to take down the Dondozo as we are able to vanquish this Incineroar uh, this time out. And uh, that is how easy it can be. Like I say, you just need to have the time to do it. But if you have got the time and you want just a consistent way to beat it, Dondozo is going to be that one. If you want a speedier way to do it, a bit more volatile, Malamar is going to be your best bet and uh, if you've had success with anything else, of course, let us know. One bitter Herba Mystica, not too shabby, but uh, we'll take it. And of course, if you want to farm this raid over the weekend, if you've got a bunch of time on your hands and you want to run through the Incineroar over and over again, then you can respawn it on your map by using the time exploit. So what you would do is just open your map here and then hit your home menu, then come down into system settings, then down into system, down into date and time. Make sure you synchronize clock where the internet is off. Click into these options, just toggle through, don't change anything in date and time, and then come back into your game and all your dens will respawn on your map. And you'll be able to hunt around, find the seven star terror den, head over to it and kind of rinse and repeat what I've just shown you. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do drop a like. Do consider subscribing to the channel as well to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. I hope you found the build useful. I hope you have a lot of success taking on the Incineroar this weekend. And we'll leave it there, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.